A movie doesn't have to be traditionally good for you to enjoy it. This seems extra true for horror movies. Horror movies are judged on a curve unique to the genre. Fans of the horror genre, going from the most die-hard to casuals, are often looking for something beyond what the typical movie metrics are. A prime example of this is 1986's Chopping Mall. Chopping Mall is a sci-fi horror movie set inside a shopping mall. I bet you didn't see that one coming. A group of teens decide to have a party in a furniture store after the mall closes. Now, despite all of these teens working at the same mall the party's going to take place in, they somehow don't know about the new robotic security guards. Being in the mid-80s, basic knowledge of robotics is completely absent from this film. A lightning strike alters the robot's programming. The night security bots see anyone inside the mall after hours as a threat that needs to be eliminated. The teens are trapped in the mall, trying to stay one step ahead of these killer robots. A deadly game of cat and mouse fills up the bulk of the runtime. The teens improvise weapons and use their knowledge of the mall to stay one step ahead of the deadly machines. I'm not sure about the management at the Park Plaza Mall, but if I had a robotic security force, I would probably have them learn the layout of the building that they're patrolling. But I guess that's besides the point. Chopping Mall was made with a reported budget of $800,000. Pulling off sci-fi horror was not easy with such a limited budget. Computer effects were basically in their infancy, and even bad ones were incredibly expensive. Chopping Mall had to go with practical effects. Now, I personally love practical effects. The resurgence in more modern filmmaking goes a long way to making things feel more real, even if they aren't as clean as computer-generated effects, sometimes to the point of sterilization. Chopping Mall doesn't have effects like that, though. The cheap gore will remind you of this specific point in time in movie making, and it really adds to the camp and the fun of it all. The mall used in the movie was the Sherman Oaks Galleria, a mall in Los Angeles that was fully functional during production. So the film production team would have to get there at night, set everything up, shoot everything they needed, break down and clean up every single night to not interrupt the mall's regular business. This put another constraint on the production of this movie. After the grueling filming process had wrapped on Chopping Mall, then called Killbots, early audiences hated it. And not just that title, the whole thing. The public relations team behind the movie came up with the much more on-the-nose title, Chopping Mall. The new title couldn't save the movie during its theatrical run or how critics would view it, though. Around the release of Chopping Mall, movie fans were in a new golden era. The home video market was massive. Chopping Mall found new life on VHS and became a cult hit with horror fans who love movies that are so bad they're good.